Welcome back to Spurred On, I'm Barnaby Slater and it's Monday so I thought I'd give you a little special, the top 15 Tottenham Hotspur transfer rumours discussed and rated. I will give my rating out of 10 for the chances of each transfer happening and then you can tell me in the comment section below whether you agree, whether you think there's more chance or less chance. Let's go for it, the top 15. Starting with number 15 is Jackson Martinez. That is Porto's Colombian hotshot. He has scored 88 goals in 128 games for Porto. Now, obviously, he's a fantastic player. However, rumours that Woolwich are also interested in him, and it's £20 million, and he's never played in the Premiership before. So for that reason, those reasons, I've gone for him at number 15. I think it's too much money. He's not played in the EPL, which Pochettino said he wanted, and... Woolwich, unfortunately, more likely to get a player of his calibre. So we'll go on to number 14, that is Christian Benteke, the Belgian striker from Aston Villa. You might have seen him in the cup final on Saturday. Have an absolute rinker dinker stinker. Terrible game for Christian. That might have meant that his, money, uh, his value has gone down a little bit, but in my opinion, still, he will end up going to a club who are willing to spend more this summer. Great player, I think he'd good, give good competition to Harry Kane, but I don't think he's coming to Spurs. So that's number 14, Christian Benteke. Number 13, the much talked about Morgan Schneiderlin, played of course at Southampton under Pochettino last season, uh, season before last and before that. But rumours are today, Monday, it's more likely he's going to Manchester United and of course we know that Woolwich Athletic are interested in him as well. I just don't think he's going to be coming to Spurs, I'm afraid. He would be great in that two in front of the back four role with Bentaleb but I don't think he's going to be a Spurs player, unfortunately. So, number 12, Gokan Torre at Besiktas. He is an ex-Chelsea player who's had a great season at Besiktas. He's a winger. Apparently, we had a £9 million bid rejected a few months ago. I've gone for the likelihood of about 4 out of 10 that he's going to come to Spurs. Uh, I can't see it happening. We had that bid rejected, and uh, he never really made it happen at Chelsea. So why would he make it happen at Spurs? Could be wrong, let me know what you think below, but 4 out of 10 for me. 11, Yeven Konoplyanka from Dnipro. We've talked about him a lot as well uh, on 60 Second Spurs before. He's on a free transfer, so that does make you think it's more likely that Levy, Baldini, Mitchell, whoever's in charge of the transfers would go for him. But uh, rumours are that we're not interested anymore. It was said that we were definitely going to go for him, but now we're not. I'm not so sure he is a great player, especially on YouTube. Take a look at him on YouTube. He's one of those players, a bit like Tom Huddleston, looks like the best player in the world on YouTube. But we've got a history, haven't we, with the Ukrainian players. Rebrov never worked out. Maybe it wouldn't work out for Konoplyanka either. I've gone for 5 out of 10, the chances of Konoplyanka playing for Spurs. 5 out of 10. What do you think? Number 10, Andre Ayew from Marseille. He's a striker. He scored 10 in 17 this season. He's also available on a free transfer. So, I think again, that does make it more likely. I've given it a 5 out of 10, but like I said before, he hasn't played in the Premier League. Pochettino has said he wants to sign players with Premier League experience. I don't know if I is going to come. I've gone for 5 out of 10. Not sure, not sure. Number 9, another Marseille player, Florian Tauvin. We've talked about him before as well. He's a winger. Rumours of him coming in fifth, uh, on a £15 million transfer. To me, that seems like too much for us to pay this time for a player who's never played in the Premier League. Uh, he does look good, but I think Lamella's starting to come through. I really do. I think he's starting to get confidence. He tried that uh, Rabona again at the weekend. Did you see that? Against Sydney FC. Uh, confidence coming up, starting to repay his value a little bit. I think he'll still be at the club next season, so a bid for Talvin I think is unlikely. I've gone for 5 out of 10 chances of Talvin coming in from Marseille this summer. Number 8, an interesting one. It hasn't been talked about a lot, but I put it in there. Johnny Evans from Manchester United. Now, we know that Louis van Gaal has said that he has told the players who are going to leave that they're going to be leaving, so I've got a feeling Johnny Evans is one of those players. We've just brought in Kevin Vimmer from FC Cole. Another centre-back young for the future. I think it's likely that Carriquez and Kabul will be leaving this season, and I think they should. So that leaves two spaces. So if Vimmer takes one up, I think we'll be looking for an experienced centre-back from the Premier League for not too much money. And I think Johnny Evans could be available for Man United for something around the 7 £8 million pound mark. So I think that is a 6 out of 10 likelihood for Johnny Evans to come in. Could be wrong, tell me what you think, but if it comes in, I will be bragging about my insider knowledge on that one. At number seven, another Man United player, Javier Hernandez or Chicharito as I'll be getting written on the back of my shirt. I'll tell you why I think this is another six out of ten chance signing. Because we need a player who can kind of offset Harry Kane's big target man kind of presence up front 
Uh, give us another option. I think Soldado will be leaving, definitely. We hope we can get Adebayo off the books. Chicharito, he's played in the Premier League. He's scored in the Premier League. He's had a good half season or so at Real Madrid. Or maybe it was a full season, but he's, he's done okay at Real Madrid. scored important goals. And I think he'd be available for about £10 million. I think he could really come in and push Harry Kane for that starting spot. I think he'd be a good signing for Spurs. So I've gone Chicharito at our number seven with the chances of six out of ten of him signing for Spurs. Number six, the Danny Ings thing. It won't quite go away. Liverpool are in a pole position to get him. Apparently he wants to talk to them ahead of Spurs. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they're up north. He likes it up north. He likes the cold. He likes the bitterness. Uh, and he likes playing for a club where everything is just completely laughable. That's fine. I'm still giving it a 6 out of 10 though because it's a free transfer uh, with a little bit of compensation. Probably 5, 6, 7 million compensation. 23 years old. Still a young player. If the talks don't go right with Liverpool and we come in with a bigger bid, you just never know. He needs more tattoos. He's just got a couple of sleeves of ink. He wants to go all full body tattoo, Mike Tyson on the face. Let's see what happens. Six out of ten for Danny Ings, I think. Number five, Ezekiel Levatsi from PSG. Uh, Levetsi, sorry, from PSG. I've gone for this to be a six out of ten chance as well. He's Argentinian like Pochettino, so maybe he's thinking, you know, Lamella one side, Levetsi the other. In 2012, Lovetsy went for £21 million from Napoli to PSG. So he's obviously got the pedigree, looks a good player again. Check him out on YouTube. Some unbelievable skills, some unbelievable tricks. Uh, I don't know, I'm going 6 out of 10. 30 years old is the main reason why I don't think it'll happen. It just seems unlike the kind of signing we're going to make these days. Levy has come out and said, we're going to be going for players of that kind of 10 to 15 million pound mark, but younger with sell on value. And I think to me, Levetsi, even if he were to have one great season, he'd probably drop off and we'd probably end up having to let him go for free in a couple of seasons time. So it's possible, but I've only given it six out of 10. Now, number four, a rumor that has piped up again today, Yannick Balassi from Crystal Palace. Pardew came out early this, uh, uh, this summer saying, Balassi, someone will have to bid something extraordinary to get him in. He has had a great season. He's a mysterious player. Lots of people say it, but I agree. He doesn't know what he's doing himself, so how can the defenders know what he's doing? I think he'd be good for us. We need a bit more pace on those wings. And the reason why I've got him as a 7 out of 10 chance of coming to Spurs is because the rumours of this uh, deal involving Andros Townsend going the other way. I really like Andros Townsend. If only he could play as well for Spurs as he did for England. But he just seems to be a little one-dimensional. And if we threw him in, say, value at, say, 10 million, and then paid another 10 million for Balassi on top, he's 26, so he's not, he's just in that range of, of young, but matured player. And I think he'd be good for Spurs. I think he'd offer us an option down the left-hand side. So I've gone for 7 out of 10 for Yannick Balassi, our fourth player in the list. Number three, now we're getting to the top three, Charlie Austin at QPR. Now, he's a player who may not excite you, he may, he may not make you think, oh, he's the one to take us that next step up, but he'll be available relatively cheap. I think about five million because QPR have gone down. Obviously, we've got a good relation with, relationship with Chris Ramsey, the manager, so it'd be pretty easy to deal with him on a transfer level. And he'd be a perfect squad player, wouldn't he? Just in behind Harry Kane, he can play in the Europa League games, he can play in the League Cup games, and I think he's a goal scorer. I really do. I think he'd push Kane for that place as well. Imagine if we got Austin and Chicharito to replace Soldado and Adebayor. That would be some unbelievable business. I've gone for Austin coming in from QPR as a 7 out of 10 chance. 7 out of 10. What do you think? I think he'd be available for 5 million, like I said. Number two, the second likeliest transfer in my mind, Kevin Morales from Everton. Now, hear me out. This has been something that's been talked about ever since January when apparently we had a bid put in for him and they rejected it and said to him, apparently Martinez said to Morales, you'll be playing more, you'll be playing more. And now Morales has come out and said that promises have been broken. So that's one reason I think it could happen. Another, he's Belgian. We've got three Belgians in the squad. I think we're probably going to aim for as many Belgians as we can. I'd go for Alderweireld at centre-back as well. It hasn't really been talked about that much, but I'd go for him as well. Keep Vertonghen and happy. Get, keep Dembele in. I think Dembele should play, and I think we should get Morales in. Again, it looks like we're going for these wingers. He's a goal scorer. Do you remember that goal he scored against Spurs at the lane a couple of seasons ago? That was devastating, but a brilliant goal. So I've gone for the Morales thing as an 8 out of 10 chance. I think we could get him for around 10 million as well. Let's see what happens. Watch this space. Number one, our top likely Spurs transfer signing of this summer. It's not exciting, but it's the Kieran Trippier one. He's a right back. He's played really well. Check him out. Check out his stats as well. He's been Burnley's player of the season, and he's reached a couple of people's teams of the season at right back. Carl Walker, 
I love him. As a guy, I love him. I love that uh, prank he did at Halloween a, a year or so ago. I really think he's got talent, but his defending is not improving. We brought Yedlin in. Yedlin in those postseason games, uh, especially on Saturday against Sydney, played really, really well. His pace is frightening. I think he is the player to come in and uh, and battle Kieran Trippier if he gets in the in the in the uh, Tottenham squad for that right back berth. I worry. I think it might be Walker's time. I don't know. I think Poch might have had enough with him of him. Uh, he never gets anywhere near his centre back, and you've got to protect your centre back. Just what I think. So Kieran Trippier, I've given it a nine out of ten chance. I think it's definitely going to happen. It's on the cards. Three and a half million, something like that. A good signing. So that was my top 15 list. Let me know what you think. I've also got some honourable mentions from the Tottenham forums. People who have been talked about on the forums, on the message boards. Uh, first one is Musa Sissoko at Newcastle. I agree with this one. I would love this to happen. I think he's a beast of a player. He needs to come to a club. And, and kind of fit in with the team. Every time I watch him at Newcastle, he's just trying to do everything himself. And he does score some great goals. That header he scored in the first goal uh, in the last game of the season to help keep them up, that was a great goal. He played well against us in the uh, in the Carling Cup this year as well. Capital One Cup, sorry, in the League Cup this year. And uh, I think he'd be a great signing. You'd probably have to pay 15 million for him, but I think he'd be a good one. The other, another honorable mention, Will Hughes from Derby. I've seen him a few times, peroxide blonde. Good player. He doesn't play every game for them, Good player, I do like him. He looks like a real creative midfielder. I'd be willing to pay three, four million for him. Whether that be enough, I don't know. Derby have just bought in Paul Clement as manager from Real Madrid. Maybe he'll want to make a team around Will Hughes. I don't know. And the last honourable men mention, uh, Mohamed Salah from uh, Chelsea on load at Fiorentina. He absolutely destroyed us in the Europa League this year. He's quick as <laughs> and I think he'd be good for us. If we could get him, I don't know if Chelsea would sell. Anyway, like I said, let me know what you think. You agree, disagree with some of those thoughts. Uh, put your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. I'm Barnaby Slater. See you next time. But one thing I do want to say about that tiny little is that he is a chavy.